Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the conclusion of our study of Mark chapter 10 verses 32 to 34 titled The Gospel and the Revelation of the Mystery. We left off our previous study in the book of Ephesians as we see that Paul was given the revelation of the mystery of the gospel but we will now see that his knowledge of the mystery was not exclusive. He was first among the apostles but all of the apostles came to the knowledge of the mystery and began preaching and teaching this mystery. For this reason, we know that all of Paul's epistles, John's epistles, Peter's epistles, and Jude's short epistle are filled with church age doctrine. In another study, we may expand upon why Hebrews, 1 Peter, and James are treated with special care but suffice it to say that just reading them, you can see that they are addressed to Hebrews and scattered Jews. So that helps us see this basic difference very easily. With that introduction, we want to remind you of our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com, where all of our messages are made available for free in MP3 download and streaming video. We now turn to the conclusion of our study of Mark chapter 10, verses 32 to 34, titled, The Gospel and the Revelation of the Mystery. But we come down here to Paul being given a dispensation. Don't think of that as a time frame. People think of dispensations as like periods of time. It's actually, although there is a relationship of time to this, it's speaking of a, an administration. It's speaking of Paul has been given this dispensation of the grace of God to dis it's to be dispensed to the Gentiles who beforehand were kind of out of the loop. But you remember Jesus told His own, He said, I've got a others, other sheep. And He wasn't talking about the Mormons or the Muslims. They didn't exist yet. And they teach people that's what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about the Gentiles that He was going to bring in and He was going to bring them in. See, Jesus was already revealing little bits of truth about this mystery during His ministry. And if you read it closely, you'll see it over and over where Jesus drops a little line here and the Jews are like, what? Later on, they put it together. And they say, oh, I remember. I remember when Jesus said that. That's what He was talking about. Yeah, it's great. So we have the dispensation of the grace of God and it's not a period of time, it's the message for this age. And I'm going to throw this in free of charge. You can study it on your own later. We'll talk about it later. The rapture takes place, that's done. And you're not going to be saved by grace after the rapture. You're going to be saved by not taking the mark and having your head cut off. So don't wait for the tribulation to try to make heaven. You better get saved now. Because you don't have promise of the next breath, the next heartbeat, you could die right now, you could die before the day is out, and you'll split hell wide open. So get saved now, and that way you don't have to worry about any of that. But if you put it off and you miss the rapture, you go into the tribulation, the dispensation of the grace of God is over. And then when we go into the millennium, it's a whole different deal too because you're not going to believe by walk by faith anymore. You're going to walk by sight because in the millennium, King Jesus is right there before your eyes. So getting these dispensations right saves you a lot of confusion. And if you want to know why you got all these different denominations and everything around you, it's because they're blind as bats. <laughs> they will not recognize dispensations and they'll fight you against it and they'll tell you it's all kinds of things. They'll blame the Jesuits and all kinds of nutty stuff. But you go back to verse, uh, Ephesians 3 and look at verses 3 and 4. Read that with me. How that by revelation He made known unto me the mystery. Stop. Paul is saying by revelation Jesus made known unto Him the mystery. Some of you are learning something new this morning. Amen? Oh, come on. Some of you are learning something new this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 But it's not new. It's just new to you. This has been in the Bible since they wrote it. And Christians have failed to recognize the difference of the dispensations and failed to recognize that after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God gave Paul the revelation of the mystery. 
He says, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. He's saying, you've read some of this in my previous epistles. When Paul wrote these epistles, they'd get copied and passed around all the different churches. And Paul's saying, you've read this before, but I'm, I'm giving it to you real clear right now. Paul was taught by Jesus. Paul was taught directly by Jesus. He tells the Galatian church, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, Paul got saved, Jesus gave him this information, this mystery of the gospel, and then Paul became a teacher to the apostles. And through them and through his epistles, which, by the way, epistles is not the wives of the apostles. In case some of you wonder that. People get a little confused on that. The epistles, that means letters. And through the apostles and his letters, Paul then shared this revelation with the rest of the church. Read verse 5 with me in Ephesians 3. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Did you get that? Don't deny it. It's right there. In other ages, it was not made known unto the sons of men. Moses didn't know anything about it. Isaiah didn't know anything about it. John the Baptist didn't know anything about it. And until Paul taught them, even the apostles didn't get it. And it was made known unto Paul... And then, look who else, it not just exclusively Paul. Don't just read Paul's letters and claim to be a big Bible scholar and run around and spend all your time trying to convince everybody to be dumb. That's what's going on. There's whole sections, pockets of Christians who uh, buy into this idea of the exclusivity of Paul and they, they don't preach the gospel anymore. They spend all their time trying to convince everybody to forget everything you were taught and only read Paul. And even then, some of them even say some of his books shouldn't be read either because they were written before he had the full mystery. So then they start dicing it up. Uh, it's called hyper-dispensationalism is the big word for it. Uh, I like what Pete Ruckman calls them. He calls them the dry cleaners. And, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> But look who else. It's, it was now, it's not just Paul. Now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So if anybody tells you it's Paul only, they're, they're leading you astray. This revelation of the mystery was not exclusive to Paul. Paul was the first, but it's not exclusive. All the apostles came on board. And that's why when you read uh, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and you read the book of Jude, and you know, you do have to take in consideration the audience like James was written to the tribes scattered. Twelve tribes scattered. So you have to take in consideration what his purpose is. Who is he talking to and why? That, that's important. But there's still truth in James for you today. There's still truth when Peter says he's writing to the strangers dispersed. He's talking about the Jews. But it still contains truth for you today. And so don't chop the Bible up like that. So let's answer this before we close our study. What exactly is the mystery? Well, Ephesians 3. Continue in verses 6 and 7. Read that with me. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body. Stop. You just blew the Jew mind in the first and second century. I mean, God may love those Gentiles, but don't put them on equal par with me, brother. I am a child of Abraham. I've got my birth certificate to prove it. And that's why Jesus said, yeah, well, you need to be born again. You see, you start to realize what Jesus was teaching. He was, he was taking on the Jews, and He was totally destroying all their prim prejudices. They thought because they had a birth certificate that could trace them back to Abraham, they were something. And Jesus said, I can take rocks and produce children of Abraham. Whoa! You know, like who is this cocky, arrogant 
That's how they thought about Jesus. You, I don't care who your daddy was or is, I don't care how you can trace yourself back, you must be born again. And if you're not, you're going to hell. You wonder why they didn't like Jesus? That is why they killed Him. And that's why they hate you when you tell them that being a Catholic or having been baptized or doing this or doing that doesn't put them in heaven. You're blowing their false prejudices and they're going to hate you just like they hated Jesus. Jesus said so. They don't hate you. They hate me. That's what Jesus said. So when you're facing off of these people, hold your ground. Hold your ground. And understand, this isn't you. They don't hate you. They hate who's in you. They hate the Jesus in you who has taught you to say what you're saying. That's who they're after. And they for 2,000 years have been cutting off heads and burning them at the stake and boiling them in oil and stabbing them and shooting them and doing everything they can to try to shut you up because they're trying to shut Jesus up. And that's why they killed Jesus in the first place. Thought they'd shut him up. Then you go into action, you read about these fellows who are turning the world upside down. That's right. Amen. Read it again. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. God stopped you again. Messiah. The Gentiles are sharing in the promise of the Messiah? No way. That's what the Jews couldn't handle. Continue, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. See, so Paul said it ain't anything to do with me. He tells you elsewhere, I was a killer. I deserved hell. And I think that's part of why he said if I could, he couldn't, but if he could, he said I'd go to hell so that my brethren could be saved. That's what gave him the kind of heart he had for the gospel. The church did not replace Israel. The mystery of the gospel is how that Jew and Gentile alike become one body. Not a nation replacing Israel, but a body. And we're, we're called a holy nation by one person one time. That's Peter. And if you read the context, he's talking about a spiritual nation, a spiritual body, a holy, a peculiar people. Jew and Gentile alike make up what's called the body of Christ. That's the mystery of the gospel. Now to a Gentile, you're thinking, well, that, that's, uh, you know, makes sense to me. What's so mysterious about that? Alright, let's put you in a time machine, whip you back to about, oh no, we want to go back before the Babylonian captivity. So we'll go about 700 700 B.C., and you've been born now by... You're a Jew. And you've been born into that family. You've got a mommy and daddy of a Jew. You men been circumcised the eighth day. And you've all been raised on Torah. You know, and you're, you know the Torah, and you know all the, you know, the sacrifices. You go to the feast all the time, your family and everything else. And you're as Jew as you can be. And you are the race, the chosen people. And on and on and on. I've just given you that much, and you can already start to see. The idea of this. You talk about blowing your mind. So that's, what, that's the, how you understand the mystery and why it's such a mystery is by understanding the times. Understanding what they're dealing with when this was written. Jesus preached His Gospel and then revealed the mystery of the body to us through Paul first and then all of the apostles. That's how it came through. That's how we got the mystery. Now we're going to close in Romans 16. Romans chapter 16. And we're going to see this. Now, if you understand what you heard this morning, you'll see this as you read through the different epistles of Paul, especially. You're going to see this. And when he says certain things that may not made sense to you before, now you're going to say, oh, he's talking about that. 
He's talking about the mystery. He's talking about how the Jews have so much trouble accepting this mystery. He's talking about how He gave Paul this mystery and through Paul then the apostles and other believers came to a knowledge of this mystery. In Romans chapter 16, he's closing his epistle to the church at Rome. And he says in verse 25, Now to Him that is of power to establish you according to My Gospel, not exclusively, but originally given through Paul to the apostles and the rest of the church, and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus preached that gospel. We just read it in Mark 10. According to the revelation of the mystery. Now many of you have read that and read that and never knew what he's talking about. Now you know. According to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Now some people deny this even exists. Because they don't read their Bible, they don't believe it. But it's right there. He even says so. But now is made manifest. When? Now. Now. When's now? Then. Then. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. I didn't even pay him to do that. That was good. <laughs> That's what I want you to understand. But now is made manifest. When's now? Then. And when was then? Well, it was, you know, we don't know the exact date, but it was the late first century. And it's being manifest. And he says, and by the scriptures of the prophets. Why? Because now that you understand the mystery, you can go back with 2020 hindsight and understand a lot of what you're reading in the prophets that the prophets themselves didn't understand when they gave the prophecy. That's right. Peter talks about that. He says, according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. There's a lot there. We go on and have a whole other Bible study. We've done that before. We'll probably do it again. But he's saying that this mystery, the gospel itself was given by Jesus Christ. And then the mystery of the gospel through Paul and the apostles, through the rest of us, that mystery has been made known. You notice that? Made known to all nations. You, I don't care where you go on planet earth today, the gospel has been preached there. A lot of people don't understand that and they don't get it. And so they'll say, what about those people down there? Those people got the gospel. And at some point, their ancestors rejected it and threw it off. And now we're seeing it's almost like a one last trip around the globe. The gospel is going around again. And a lot of people are being saved. But that's what was made known to them. It was made known to them that God chose a race of people to bring His Messiah through, the Jews, and that Messiah was named Jesus Christ. He died on the cross, shed His blood, and paid the full price for your sin. He was buried, but He rose again, conquering sin and death, declaring, I am the resurrection and the life. If you will trust in Him, then you're trusting in the One who will raise you from the dead. He will judge you as righteous because of what He did, because of His blood, and you are saved, and you are eternally saved. Amen. That's the mystery. And that's what we preach. Verse 27 closes, To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. 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 We were going to close with communion. Jesus not only preached the Gospel on numerous occasions, but when He had that last supper with His followers, He took bread and he explained to them that just as the bread was broken, his body would be broken. And so when we take this bread and we break that bread, we are picturing Jesus' body being broken. And that body was broken to pay for your sins. Jesus did not sin. He went to the cross and paid for somebody else's sin. And that sin is my sin and your sin. And so, as often as we eat the bread and drink the wine, we do this in memory of Jesus Christ.
word is heart, which is the King James word for deer. As the heart Visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com where you can find a wealth of mp3 audio message downloads along with additional videos, articles, and links. This message is brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. I am Greg Miller. Thank you for listening. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Visit the online ministry of Bible teacher and elder of Bible Believers Fellowship in Worthington, Ohio, Michael Kaler. Visit 2 Timothy 2-15.org. That's 2 Timothy 2-15.org. That's why we read in 1 Corinthians 15, and I want you to read that with me. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And that just means unless you've just flippantly said, oh yeah, I believe. There have been many people have a preacher come to their door, knock on the door, and say, oh, say the sinner's prayer, and oh, okay, well, blah, 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 blah. And they don't mean it. Listen, folks, you know your heart. I don't. You know your mind. I don't. And no one else does. But if you have not been serious with God and really believed the gospel, you're on your way to hell. You have purposely put a wall of separation between you and God because you've not taken this seriously. But if you will take it seriously 
and really search your heart and say, I believe. I believe this gospel. And what is the gospel? Read verses 3 and 4 with me. Here it is. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's it. You seriously, before God, believe that He died for your sins and paid the full price. He rose from the dead and conquered sin and death. And by that alone, you have eternal life. The Bible says you are saved. But if not, then not. That's how simple it is. You know, religion stinks. Because religion muddies the waters. Religion makes you think that church membership or having a title or something like that is going to help you in dealing with your sin. Let me tell you something. You sinned against God, not the religious people, not the institutions who are giving you all these false promises. You sinned against God and what He says matters. And if you sinned against God, He is infinite. Your sin requires an infinite payment. That's why you can't work for it. You can work your entire life and do the best you can and it's still finite. You can never do enough works to pay for the cost of sin. And Jesus dying on the cross was an infinite payment for your sin. And that's why He's your only hope.